Hello, coach and hypnotist Susan Urban here. Welcome to this recording. Today I have the privilege to share with you part of an urban quantum healing hypnosis session because I want to show you what happens when their superconscious comes through and your questions get answered. And I always jokingly say, imagine if uh, you had a psychic and a medium all built in within you where you don't have to ask anybody outside of you for the answers, some really important life questions that you might have in regard to what is your purpose or should you have more children or what does this pain in your knee mean or anything like that. So I uh, thank you for listening to this really exquisite recording. Obviously, I received permission from this client to share this with you, again, so that you can see how this could be beneficial to you. And if you haven't already, I have a few videos out that explain to you the benefit on why urban quantum healing hypnosis might be useful to you and how it all works. So, now in regard to this session... This young lady came to me because she wanted to know why does she continue having anxiety about her finances and she experiences a lot of times these thoughts of, well, if things are too good, it may be too good to be true and that means something bad will happen. So she had these thoughts that basically a program that she kept running in the back of her mind that things just can't always be good because if it's too good, something bad will happen. The other thing that she has been struggling with is that she equates money with safety and security and obviously feels very um, unsafe and insecure when she's not able to consistently make the money that she wants to make. So she wants to know how to overcome these blocks. In addition, she would like to know what blocks were preventing her from accumulating the monetary and career goals that she so much desires. And lastly, she was... Um, she wanted to know about her skin issues, how she can resolve them. And you will hear loud and clear on what the superconscious tells us. And last thing, she says that at times she has a difficulty trusting her gut and her intuition. And how can she strengthen that, that sense and that feeling or that hunch inside of her so that she can depend more on her, on her intuition and, and on her gut instinct. So I am going to press uh, play now so that you can hear part of this session. And again, I'm only sharing with you the part where the superconscious comes through my client and helps us with answering some of the questions that this lady had. All right, so here we go. When you chose to bring forward this light for her to see, why did you pick this lifetime? For her to understand that even in the darkest time, there's always light. What does that lifetime have to do with her life now? Safety consequences of not trusting her gut and intuition. Mm. Safety, not trusting her. You said a lot of things here. If I can get some clarification, and that was one of her questions, that she, it seems like she finds it difficult to trust her gut and her intuition, and she second-guesses herself at times. Is there anything... Mm. She doesn't second guess herself. She puts what she should do, or what society tells her to do, or what somebody else tells her to do before her gut and her intuition. And is that what's causing the anxiety? Yeah, somewhat, but not completely. Is it a bit of a conflict that she's working through when she wants to trust her gut, but at the same time she wants to maybe please everybody else? Every time she does that, she's wrong, though. Her 
true gut needs to guide her. Everything she needs is within her. And every time she looks outward or trusts somebody else over herself, it doesn't it doesn't work out the way she wants it to. Hmm. So then you're saying her gut and her intuition are already very strong, very well developed, yeah? Oh yeah. Hmm. She just needs to listen to it. Hmm. And um <laughs> I happen to be somebody who is very process oriented and maybe this is not even necessary, but if I were to ask, is there any way Jacqueline could maybe lean into that sense or that feeling a little bit more? Is there any advice you would have for her and how to do that? When she second guesses herself, ask her why, what is influencing her, who is influencing her and remind herself that her gut and her intuition are right. And don't let anybody tell her otherwise. Because they are incorrect. She's going to love to hear that, I think. This is going to be very useful for her. Um, she does have some other questions in regard to her uh, finances and security. She wanted to know why does she have so much anxiety when it comes to finances and security, which has to do with money and safety. And she seems to equate money with safety. Because she's allowed society to affect her. Mm. She's always safe. So it's really the influence of society that she has allowed. And so are you saying that she needs to listen or look less at what other people are doing and focus more on what's important to her? Or is it something else? She needs to unlearn the things that she's learned in the last 39 years. She needs to look within herself and figure out what she truly needs and what she truly wants and stop making her goals and needs about what she thinks society wants her to be. Well, how you say it like it's so easy. How can you unlearn 39 years of programming? By just trusting your gut and listening to yourself and asking more questions. Mm -hmm. I guess everything, everything she needs is within her and so I guess her feelings will also guide her when, when something feels good to her she probably would know that she's on the right path mm. yes but she doesn't allow herself to feel good for a long time yeah, I've noticed that. Can we help her with that somehow? Because I see she works so hard and she puts so much effort into everything and wanting to do everything for her family. And it seems like she doesn't really allow herself to enjoy. It's self-sabotaging and it's due to a program. She believes that with the good comes the bad, which is false. Mm. Good brings up more good. But the other thing she fears is, well, not that she fears, but she tells herself to soothe anxiety that the bad brings good. But the truth is, is good brings good. And yes, bad can bring good, but her life is supposed to be more good than bad. And her fear causes her to constantly sabotage herself and put herself in situations of conflict because she's afraid that if things are going too well, that suddenly something bad is going to happen. It's going to, you know, explode in her face or something. If something really good happens to her, then that must be me and that something really bad is going to happen. So she kind of stays on this, like, equilibrium where, you know, something good happens, but then, you know, she self-sabotages and makes something bad again. But she doesn't need to fear that, with a lot of good will come to bad. That is false. That is a thought that does not serve her. It 
caused, you know, by parenting and anxiety from her parents. And it's false. Good brings good. Like attracts like. And yes, it's true that she'll have bad days and that means the next day will be good. But that doesn't mean that the next day after that will be bad. The more good that she has in her life, the more good she can spread to others and the more she can help other people in this world, which truly is her life purpose, is to spread good and positivity and to help as many people as possible. And really, her true purpose is every person she comes in contact with is to affect them in a positive way. Yeah. And that is her gift. She so there's no reason for her to think that she needs to have bad things happen to her for good things to happen. It's totally false. That is so simple. She will love to hear this because she was concerned. She said, what blocks are preventing her from accomplishing her monetary and her career goals? It's her own self blocking her, her belief that bad things have to happen to her before good things can. That's false. She can ride it out and have all good things happen to her along the way. Actually, the more good that happens, the better it gets. And she needs to just allow herself to just ride that wave of goodness and ride that energy and stop being afraid and stop creating negativity and bad things and challenges in front of her. She's creating that. Mm. Even when a challenge comes into play, she can easily solve it with positivity and mindset and trusting her gut and intuition and taking care of the problem right away. That way it doesn't have to consume her life and she doesn't have to get fixated on those problems. She needs to appreciate the good. And every time a problem or a challenge arises, focus back on the positive. Focus back on the good. Allow the good to come to her. What she's doing is she's blocking the good. Okay, that makes sense because she she keeps thinking that if there's too much good, then there's going to be so much bad. So that makes sense. But I think when she understands this way of thinking and doing, I think she will easily focus on, as you say, on the positive and what you focus on expands and she will be able to relax a lot more and enjoy herself a lot more and trust that she already has done so much good in this world and imagine how powerful she will be when she lets all of that self-sabotage go. So, so she really is then doing her purpose in her work. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And her going back to be a counselor is a good thing for her. Because even though she's talking to people that have tragic lives, she's able to help them to gain positivity and increase self-esteem and improve their lives. And um, I guess, uh, oh yeah, and another important point that she wants to understand is why does she keep having skin issues? Um, I know many times the superconscious mind can can do some healing, and I'm wondering if this would be appropriate right now for Jacqueline to receive the healing that she wants. Because I know all of these physical ailments are connected to emotional causes. Is there anything she needs to learn or understand about the skin condition? Stop hiding. Stop. Stop believing you have an issue. Let your body heal. What do you mean by stop hiding? Skin issue is manifesting from her hiding who she truly is. Mm, that makes sense. It sort of allows her to wear a mask in a sense, yeah? She wears a lot of masks. Hmm. And since we're already on the subject of body and health and healing, would it be appropriate to uh, do a body scan with her and 
thank you. And I can talk to you while you're doing that, yeah? Mm -hmm. If we notice anything in her body, if you have any advice for her, maybe with her diet or her exercise or her sleep or any other, any other details that might be useful for her so that she, she can be as energetic and as powerful as she wants to be every day. Don't focus on weight loss, focus on health. And she already knows what she needs to do and eat to be healthy. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, be careful about overdoing things. That's what I thought. I have noticed that maybe her exercise, she might be overdoing it a little bit. Is that why she had this recent injury with her foot? Definitely. Was that a lesson? Not necessarily a lesson, down. but she needed a break, and she got it, <laughs> literally and figuratively. <laughs> she got a break. Yeah, well, I hope she uh, took advantage of that break. And I think she even said out loud for a while, I need a break, I need a break, and she got a break. Yeah. Oh, we have to be careful with what we say, don't we? Words are spells. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate all, is there anything else in our body that we want to address? Anything that stands out? Her heart, her lungs, her digestion, her joints. All of that looks good. That's good. She will love to hear that. And not that she asked this, but I think it might be useful um, because she does have a lot of people working with her. And I believe that she trusts them and she thinks that they're good people. Uh, is there anything there that you would like to tell her in regard to her team and her staff? She's got to take back control over her call center. She needs to trust her gut when it comes to that. She can continue to run it, but she needs to be the boss. Mm -hmm. So this sounds to me like she needs to enforce, be a little bit more forceful there, a bit more authoritative maybe? Yes, definitely. Don't allow her to get bullied. Don't allow anybody else to cloud her judgment. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess when she knows that, it will be easy for her to implement that because she knows how to be that way, right? Well, if people are causing problems, they need to go. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And again, as long as she knows that, she will be able to handle a situation and handle the people. Well, I tell her all the time that you need to be very selective with who you're allowed to be. Let in your life. That's on you, right? And she can make those decisions because to be working with Jacqueline is a privilege and that needs to be earned. But that's just me. Well, she also has to change her mindset and the things she says when it comes to employees and agents. You know, she has the mindset she talks about people are lazy, she can't find anybody good, mm -hmm. and that's what she's going to be attracting. So instead of focusing on who she doesn't want, she needs to focus on the people she wants in her life. Oh, and instead of finding flaws in others, she needs to highlight the positives in people. Mm -hmm. Because and when red flags arise, remove those people immediately. Mm -hmm. That's very useful advice. I have noticed. She has the skill set where she doesn't need to give people a second chance. It's rarely as she's found, does that ever work out? Mm -hmm. What was that last part again? She should not give people second chances. When she she's has the experience that she can see those red flags mm -hmm. and anticipate what's going to happen very clearly. So instead of trying to give somebody a second chance to see if they're going to change, just 
walk away. Mm. Move on to the next person because the red flags she sees are ones that she knows those people are not going to improve. That's their character. And it's just going to drag her down and slow things down for her. She surrounds herself with people like that. I think this will be so important for her to hear because I also noticed that she has, she has so much kindness and she wants she wants so badly for people to succeed and and be accomplished but I guess she needs to toughen up and focus more on herself and um, the training that she's already providing is incredible so yeah I think we have answered all the questions now, and I really appreciate the advice and the guidance. Is there anything else before uh, we end today? Is there anything else that would be important and valuable for Jacqueline to receive today? Stay close to your family. Her her immediate family or all of her family, her parents, her in-laws, children? So I'm going to end it right there because that was almost the end of the session anyhow. So as you can see, a lot of questions were answered and you can also see some of the details and how deep uh, these conversations go. So I hope you got a lot out of this. And again, I am, by sharing these videos and parts of these sessions, I, my goal is to give you a comfort and, uh, and, you know, a sense that also of the possibilities of what, what could be possible for you. And you might have some of these questions right now that you would love to have an answer to. And this is definitely one of the easiest, most natural most dependable ways that you can tap into your own higher self so that you can get these answers. So feel free to post below what questions you may have about this. And I'm also going to post a link below that uh, is a recording of what is urban quantum healing hypnosis and how it can benefit you so you can get more information about that. All right. Thank you very much. Much love. Bye-bye.